Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we are going to create this nice toggle switch and we are going to do it from scratch using nothing but HTML and CSS. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so here I am in VS Code and as you can see I've already set up some basic boilerplate for my HTML but before we start building our switch button, we first need to understand some tricky behavior about checkbox inputs and labels. Let's start by putting a checkbox here. Let's remove the ID and name attributes. And let's add a paragraph too, which says some text. And there you have it, your checkbox and your paragraph. Now, let's go into our CSS. Let's target our paragraph and let's say that its color must be red and just for visibility let's increase the font size to maybe 3 rams. Cool. Now let's say that we want to change the color of this text based on the fact that this checkbox here is actually checked or not. We can do that by going to select our input in a state of checked and basically this checked is a pseudo class selector which represents any radio or checkbox element that is toggled to an on state and now that we have that we want to select the paragraph which directly follows our input and we can do that by using this adjacent sibling combinator which actually separates two selector the first and the second and it matches the second element only if it follows immediately the first one. Now we can say that in this case the color of the paragraph must be green and as a result you can see that every time my checkbox is actually checked my paragraph becomes green while every time I turn off my checkbox the color turns red again. Now a really cool thing you can do with inputs is actually associating them with a label. So let's go into our index.html and let's add a label. Let's delete the for attribute for now and the text will just be hello. Now associating a label with an input has as a direct consequence the fact that the label text will not only be visually associated with its corresponding input but it will also be programmatically associated with it too. And what I mean is that when a user clicks on a label the browser passes the focus to its associated input. And so we increase the heat area for focusing the input. And to actually associate the label with the input itself, first we need to give the input element an ID of, let's say, my input. And then the label actually needs a for attribute with the same ID we gave for the input. So my input. So you see that if I click on my label, the input will get checked. There is also an alternative method which I personally prefer whenever possible, which consists in nesting the input element directly inside the label element. And maybe we can throw also the paragraph in it. And in this case, both the four attributes and the ID attribute are not needed anymore because the association will be actually implicit. So now you can see that every time I click on my label the checkbox will get checked as before. This trick that I just showed you is called the checkbox hack and is a very well known trick so I'll leave you a link in the description to an article on cssstreaks.com if you want to dig more into it. Now that we covered all of this stuff, we are ready to use this trick in order to build our switch button. So first of all, let's delete all of our HTML and all of our CSS. For our HTML, we'll just have a label with a class of, let's say, switch. And this label obviously will wrap an input of type checkbox and this checkbox will have a class of let's say switch input 
and we'll also need a div with a class of let's say switch control that actually represents the peel shape of our switch just to be clear we want to build this peel shape here for this dot shape we don't really need a div because this dot shape will be treated as a pseudo element now for our css we want to start with a bunch of custom properties just to write our code as clean as possible and i'll do it very quickly here cool so now we can start with our body element and we'll give it a mean height of 100 vh so that it fills up the entire view per height and maybe we'll also throw a display of grid and place items of center just to center our scene now for our switch container we want it to behave as an inline block element so display is inline block so that it doesn't occupy more space than what it actually needs. We'll give it also a cursor of pointer just to give the user a hint on the clickability of the element. Of course, now we want to hide this checkbox, so we'll say that by targeting our switch input and throwing a display of none. Now it's time to move to our pill shape which visually represents our switch. So we called it switch control and we'll give it a position of relative because we want the dot shape, which will be treated as a pseudo element to be absolutely positioned with respect to it. This element can have a width of let's say switch width, which we set up as a custom property the same goes for the height, so switch height, and we'll give it a background too, so background color is switch background color, and the border radius, of course, of switch border radius. And now we'll build the actual dot shape using a pseudo element, so switch control, and then we can choose both an after or a before. It doesn't really matter in this case because it will be absolutely positioned anyway. So let's stick with an after and we'll say that the content is nothing. We have a position of absolute on it. We have a top of zero, a left of zero, and maybe we'll have a width of let's say switch height because we want this dot to be as wide as the switch is tall and for the height we'll just throw a 100% now we'll add a background color of let's say switch dot color and a border radius too so border radius is switch border radius and maybe we'll add also a nice box shadow of 0, 0 for the offset, 5 pixel for the radius, and maybe just a dark gray for our color. Cool, so now one last thing we can do is actually scale up a little bit our dot, and we can do that by saying that the transfer has a scale going on of, let's say, 1.1, a very little scaling up so that our dot shape here is slightly bigger than our peel shape and that's pretty much it for the ui of our switch now of course we want it to be interactive so that if we click on it the switch changes color and the dot actually translates to the right so we'll just come here and we'll say that we want our peel shape to change color whenever the switch is toggled on. So we'll do just that by selecting our switch input in a checked state and we'll target our peel shape, which is the sibling of our input. So we called it switch control. And then we'll say that it has a background color of let's say switch 
PG active color. Cool, so now that we have that, we want our dot shape to be translated to the very end of the switch. So, as before, we are going to select our switch input in a state of checked and its sibling switch control, but this time we'll select the after pseudo element contained in it, which correspond to our dot shape. And we'll say that we want it to be translated of 100% over the X axis. So transform is translate over the X axis of 100%. And that is okay, but you see that something strange is happening here. And that's our scaling factor that gets overwritten by this transform property. So we need to repeat this scaling before everything else. So scale is 1.1 and you see that now everything is going back to normal. And if you're wondering if this repetition could be avoided, the answer is yes, because now modern browser supports individual transform properties like scale, transform and rotate, but that's a very fresh feature it's starting to get more and more support by browsers and I'll leave you a link down in the description if you want to dig more into it. Now, everything looks good except we need some transition between states. So first of all, let's go into our switch control and let's have a transition, transition over the background color property background color of let's say 250 millisecond with a knees curve and that's it for our background changing and lastly we'll have a transition for our dot shape translation so we just go here and we say that transition is transform 250 milliseconds is and now our switch is completed. And because we've written our code as clean as possible using custom properties, we can now easily customize our switch, changing, for example, the width of it, and it gets bigger. Or maybe we can change the active color to something like Rebecca purple. Maybe we can change the dot color to be maybe red. And yeah, basically now you can customize it as you like. So that was our toggle switch in HTML and CSS only. If you want to take a look at the code, I will leave a link down in the description. And if you have any question or if you just like the video and you want to let me know it, please leave a comment and maybe consider subscribing. That will help me so much and I will really appreciate it. So. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.